So we had a question about number two, the particular issue of looking at these, um, looking at my costs here in the table set up to the question, and then part A is asking you about output, marginal product. It doesn't seem like those are very related because, uh, again, the cost are costs and out, uh, the marginal product relates to output on a per worker basis. But what I said in the forum, because Greg had a similar question, don't we need to know production data to get the answer? And at least he was very confused, but probably not after he read my, my heads up there. So slides 820 through 22, producing incurs costs. There's a relationship between the two concepts. Um, you don't technically need all these little equations here, but this little picture should give you some clarification. And I think I had kind of a summary of it, yeah, here on the very last slide. When marginal product is increasing, then marginal cost should be decreasing. And again, the idea that of marginal product increasing means that your workers are becoming more efficient as you, as you keep hiring people. These extra people are producing output at a faster rate than the previous people were able to. When marginal product is increasing, then you're becoming more efficient on the kind of the output side of things. So if you're becoming more efficient on the output side, you should be becoming more efficient on the cost side too. So when your marginal product is increasing, your marginal costs have to be decreasing and vice versa. So if you see cost data here, and if you're able to say kind of the inverse of what I have here on the slides, if you're able to see a pattern occurring with the marginal cost part of it, then you can make some inferences about what's happening to the marginal product side of things. So hopefully that will clarify the part A, the part A-ness of that. On B, when I ask for AC and MC, do I mean average total cost? Do they always use ATC? Um, yeah, it looks like they do. Yeah, I mean, different, different books, different economists will have different notations. Yeah, so when I say AC, then I mean it's just your average cost. So your average total cost, it's just a shorthand for that. And then marginal cost is the same thing as the short run marginal cost that the book always refers to. So again, for part B, um, AC is shorthand for ATC, MC is shorthand for SMC. So it's it's ATC, not AFC. Yeah, definitely. That mostly because I mean people people sometimes care about average fixed costs. I mean people sometimes care about fixed costs in general, but. Um, as we mentioned way back in the, the optimization chapter, most of the, the things that economists are interested in are these marginal ideas. So if we're in a particular status quo right now, how does that status quo change if we do something different, if we, if we change our behavior in one direction or the other by, you know, by one step? So if we hire one more person, what happens to our costs? If we hire one more person, what happens to our output, et cetera? So the idea of fixed costs, I mean, they're, they're obviously important in terms of telling us how much profit we're going to make and things like that. But in, as far as influencing decisions, they're not, they're not going to be very important. And I just looked at some of the questions that I'm actually asking in this particular problem. So I don't know if I want to say a whole lot more than this. Okay, if I just go back to the previous chapters, I can feel better about myself and that I won't be giving too much away. So again, from the optimization chapter, it was all of our decisions were based on you know, marginal benefits and marginal costs. Um, the things that if we make another step in this direction, then what does that do to our benefits? What does that do to our costs? And fixed costs don't, don't enter into that. So I've got my fixed costs are always my fixed costs and they never change depending on if I have zero output or a thousand output, if I have zero workers, if I have a hundred workers, those fixed costs always stay the same. When you see AC, it's not, again, for economists, we don't really, in most of the graphs that we have, we didn't really show what happened to those fixed costs very much. They just didn't really enter into a whole lot of our, our pictures. So we had this, you know, the typical marginal cost, average total cost, average variable cost graph. I mean, you could draw an average fixed cost in there, and I may have done that earlier. Probably not, though, just because it's one of those things that's just not very interesting for us because when we're making these decisions about, and you'll see this a little bit more in the next uh, week, the next module, when we get into thinking about um, how firms decide the best amount of output to produce. It's all going to depend on these three curves, and the fixed costs aren't really going to enter into it because, again, the stuff I mentioned before about optimal behavior and thinking about marginals. So that's just a long way of saying that just seeing AC is not shorthand for average fixed cost. It's shorthand for average total cost. 
when I say just identify the range of output, then again, you can you should be able to say, well, I know from slide eight, well, from chapter eight, that there's this relationship between um, patterns with marginal product and patterns with marginal cost. So if if the marginal product side is, do, is doing something, then the marginal cost side must be doing something. If the marginal cost is doing this, then the marginal product must be doing that. So usually, again, when we talk about, you know, do we have increasing returns or diminishing returns, we would usually say, well, there's increasing returns when the number of workers is from this to that. Um, so let's see. Like for um, slide nine, we could say, well, we have increasing returns when you have workers that go from up to two, is that after the, after the second worker, marginal product starts to diminish, so you have diminishing returns from worker number three forward. So usually when we had this discussion about do you have increasing returns or diminishing returns, we always mention it in terms of the amount of labor that you're using. So we have increasing returns up to worker number two and we have diminishing returns after worker number two or starting with worker number three. But this question isn't asking about the amount of labor where we have increasing returns and diminishing returns. It's asking about the amounts of output where you can see the same, where you can predict patterns on the marginal product side of things. So again, that would be somewhat confusing if, if there wasn't this discussion at the end of chapter eight about having these similar patterns. So in the picture that I have here on 821, I could say it looks like when the marginal product is increasing in slide 821, increasing up to point A, that 500 units of labor, that seems to correspond with, well, 500 units of labor seems to correspond with this 3250 units of output. And so if there's an increase in marginal product up to there, then that seems to correspond with the decrease in costs or marginal costs to that same amount of output. So I could, you could say it different ways. You could, I could say, I know that marginal product is increasing up to 500 units of labor. Or I could also say, I know that marginal cost is decreasing up to 500 units of labor. Because if marginal product is improving, if, we have, if we're becoming more efficient on the production side, then we have to be becoming more efficient on the cost side. Or I could come down here and say, for output less than 3250, the marginal cost has to be falling. But I could also say, for output less than 3250, the marginal product has to be rising. Even though, if, again, if you just kind of cover your screen or your book or whatever, if I cover up panel A and I can't see what's happening to the marginal product, I could still make some predictions, correct predictions, about what's happening to marginal product just because I can see what's happening to marginal cost. So if marginal costs are becoming more efficient and the marginal cost is falling, that must mean that the marginal product is rising also.